We all make compromises in our relationships. My question to you is, are you resentful about those compromises? If you are resentful, then you are poisoning your relationships. And today I'm going to tell you why and how you can change that. Hi, my name is Dr. Estelle Romanelli, and this is The Potential State. And today we're going to be talking about resentment, the poison of relationships. So the whole family of resentment, bitterness, self-pity, I all put them under the victim mentality. And in this context, the victim mentality is a mentality where I, something is being done to me and I'm helpless about that. That breeds reactivity, passivity, sometimes a lack of agency, helplessness, even being frozen, right? And it's fine to feel that from time to time on different levels and areas. But over, if, if you feel this over and over again in your, in your in, intimate relationships, because this is a system, when you feel like you're a victim, when you're resentful, you're casting automatically your partner as the reason for that, as a persecutor, as the problem, as the oppressor. So it doesn't become any more, it's not a personal feeling with myself, it's actually a relational move. And from there, you're kind of deepening the chances of increasing the chances of the victim triangle. You can refer to that episode as well, where they're the persecutor, you're the victim, and you're just recreating that dance again and again. And then from the victim mode, you kind of jab back, you attack them back. So what do we do? But in the reality, right, there's a reality there that a relationship is not what I want. Not everything I want is happening. So what are the reactions? How can I actually react to that? So Terry Real in his book, um, How Can I Get Through to You? He talks about withdrawal. So withdrawal is one of the losing strategies, he calls it. When I say, you know what? Never mind. She's never going to be like this. He's never going to give me that. That's never going to happen. Kind of like give up and I become resentful. The problem with that is also it's passive aggressive. And it's also, it's the kiss of death through relationships because even if you don't divorce or we don't say goodbye, we don't separate, I am less present, I am less passionate, I am less attuned. The other option is to accept, to accept certain things are not going to be like I want. But that requires maturity and the realization that you can't always get what you want. It's an adult prefrontal cortex stance. And that requires you, one, to take stock of what you already have. To realize, okay, I'm not getting one, two, and three, but I'm getting A, B, and C. Two, it requires generosity of spirit because I need to stop blaming my partner and start realizing that I am part of that. And there's the example of when you point at someone else, three fingers are pointing back at you. So you're moving from pointing at them because of you, I don't have this, to saying, these are the reasons why I keep doing this. And it requires energy because the easiest thing is just to say, whatever, to withdraw, Okay, and blame the partner. Acceptance requires me to take a stance, to stay open, to stay present. So I want to give an example. In the clinic, I always do, people come to me with a victim mentality, right? Because the whole therapeutic setting is come help me, come fix, come heal, right? So I need to help them move from the victim mentality to an agency position. How do we do that? Through owning their shit. Through showing them their secondary gains and how did this happen? And that gives them an opportunity to imagine something different. But the only chance they have to change is once they can take complete ownership over what they did, over their reality, over the dynamic of their relationships. So for example, I was once working with this downstairs parent, referred to the episode downstairs and upstairs parent, and she was very bitter and resentful toward her husband who was not helping her with the kids, who was not helping her at home, and she kept blaming him and him. And then you slowly looked at her secondary gains and what historically moved her into that dynamic. What did she gain from being the downstairs parent? And the more she saw that, the more she could stop pointing at him, more looked at herself, and the partner became less and less defensive. And from there, she could say, wait, I have the power to change this. I don't have to wait for my partner to change for me to change. Refer to the episode, don't wait for your partner's approval. So again and again and again, the move is from withdrawal, from resentment to acceptance. And how do we do that? So first of all, notice in your relationship, where are you accepting things that are not like what you want? And where are you harboring resentment? And you'll, your map where you're withdrawing and where you're accepting is resentment. That's your, that's your lackness. That's where you, that, that will tell you where to go. Then share this episode with your partner so you have a common language. Also, so they don't get too defensive for when the next step is to verbalize, maybe first to a friend, then to your partner, all the areas where you're resentful, all the areas where you withdraw, all the areas which, which you sometimes yeah, you don't talk about and just let out, spew out all the bitterness, all the anger, all the helplessness. Blame everyone. Do the immature thing and just blame everyone. Get all of that out. And once you pop that zit and have your partner or your friend, they don't have to do anything. They just have to hold on to themselves and let you speak. When you're done, 
start seeing, okay, so what are the possible secondary gains that I had from this reality? How did this reality serve me? I wouldn't have adopted it into my life if it didn't serve me at a certain point in my life. And I refer back to the systematic change. So if there are more gains and losses, then perhaps it's time for you to move into acceptance. If you can own your shit and say, okay, it's not ideal, but the truth is it gives me one, two, and three, then it, you know what? I'm going to not blame you. I'm going to accept that this is an active choice I'm making. And by staying in this relationship, I'm actually staying because I have more gains and losses. And share this not only with yourself, but with your partner, because you want to clean out that resentment. Because remember, when you're ver verbalizing your resentment, what they're hearing is it's your fault. You're not good enough, smart enough, kind enough, loving enough. If there are more losses than gains, then it's time to change. That's not really easy. Don't expect your partner to be encouraging that change because they're in balance and they don't want to change their role. So this is going to be upon you. You are going to have to, to own it and you're going to have to take responsibility and try to change that and plow through that difficulty. We call that second order change. And over time, the aim is to feel more and more like the compromises in your life are your choice, are your decision. You stop blaming the others, your partner, the world, society, and you start taking responsibility. Because at the end of the day, either own it or change it. My name is Dr. Salvo Manelli, and this was The Potential State. I'll see you next time.